Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont, maker of bet things for better living through chemistry, presents Dean Jagger as Captain Robinson of the Unsinkable Marblehead. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont. Our play tonight gives a vivid picture of our Navy at grips with the enemy. In this war, chemistry and the other sciences have given us many new and effective weapons. Nevertheless, it is interesting to note that black powder, oldest of all major explosives, is still indispensable in modern battle. Black powder was the first product of the original DuPont plant in 1802 on the historic Brandywine. DuPont is still supplying this essential explosive to the Army and Navy in important quantities. Our play tonight, written especially for Cavalcade by Charles K. Freeman, tells how a gallant warship won for herself the title The Unsinkable Marblehead. DuPont brings you this exciting drama starring Dean Jagger as Captain Robinson on The Cavalcade of America. An East Coast Shipyard, 1923. Can you see all right, Mabel? Uh, pretty good. Change places with me. You've never seen a ship launch before. It's an old story to me. Come on. Oh, imagine seeing a battleship launch. <laughs> a cruiser, dear. A cruiser. It is a cruiser, isn't it, Will? Oh, yes, yes. A cruiser. The Marblehead. Cruiser the name for town, uh-huh. battleship for state, submarine for fish. Oh, see the woman who's going to christen it? Where? Up there, holding the flowers. Say, I wonder if it's a bottle of champagne. Come on over and you can see. What are those men pounding down there for, Daddy? Isn't the ship dark? They're driving out the braces that hold the ship so it'll slip into the water. Oh. Will it make a big splash? Pretty big. What's that funny thing at the end of the ship, Daddy? Those are propellers. They spin around and drive the ship through the water. Oh, I know that. I mean that big thing. Oh, that's the rudder. Gee, it's as tall as a house. What's a rudder? That's what the ship steers with. Don't ask them any questions. Won't it break off? No. I get shot off, but I doubt it. What if it did get shot off? And heaven help them is all I can say. A ship without a rudder is... <laughs> I christen the Marblehead! That was the Marblehead 19 years ago, 1924. I wasn't her skipper then. I wasn't assigned to her until some years later. For a few brief months after she was launched, she was the pride of the fleet. Jane's fighting ships gave her the usual paragraph. Marblehead, cruiser class, third of her line, force crews, 35 knots, displacement, so-and-so, you know. The usual specifications that would be of interest only to a naval officer or the nation's enemy. Nobody had much of an idea then that she would ever tangle with the enemy and limp halfway around the world from the Java Sea. Yes, but that's getting ahead of the story. Early last year, she was reported sunk off the coast of Java. It was the Japanese who reported the sinking. So sorry, Japanese wrong. One day last spring, the Marblehead got home. Get over the bow line. Water the line doubled up in the engine secured, Mr. Blake. Get over. I'm going below. Yes, sir. Double up lines and secure the engine. Secure all guns and battle lookout watches. Are you the captain, sir? That's right. The pack who are reporting aboard, sir. This is the Marblehead, isn't it? That's right. They uh, must have sent through the wrong repair order. You look ship as you can be. <laughs> you better have a look below, this way. After you, sir. Well, did you say ship change? Sweet Emmeline, what hit her, Captain? Now, the wardrooms and living quarters will all need new installations throughout. Where did all this happen, sir? The Java, Java Sea. Yeah, but how did you get her back yet? You didn't sail 15,000 miles without a rudder. No, not quite. We rigged up emergency steering gear in Ceylon. Before that, we had to steer with our engines from the time we got hit. You know what, Captain? I think this baby must be unsinkable. (laughs) 
unsinkable? Perhaps. But there were days and weeks after that morning in the Java Sea when nobody in his right mind would have given a plug nickel for the Marblehead. That was right after Pearl Harbor, when everybody, including the Japanese, saying, Where's the American Navy? Well, this particular unit of the Navy was in the Java Sea, maintaining constant lookout for an enemy that never showed up, manning the guns four hours on, eight hours off. Still, there, there was time to shoot the breeze, low from the sun, and indulge in a sailor's favorite pastime, belly aging. First section will leave the watch. Bad guns, control testing, battle stations. Control testing? What kind of a war is this, anyway? What are you kicking about? You get a chance to use that gun? You'll talk different then. Maybe we'd see some action if we were on a destroyer. This old cruiser, all we ever do is play backstop. Oh, what? This ain't any sandlot game, cousin. This is a series. Starts out slow, but nobody ever takes it in a walk. Give me a match. Destroyers put in at a port once in a while, too. Gee, just to see trees and hills and walk on dry land. Oh, dry up. You're homesick. Nuts. I'm seasick. I can see nothing but water and sand and palm trees and flat level country. Where I come from, we got green grass and fields and hills. You should have joined the infantry. You don't know my old man. He did a hitch in the Navy. He spent it all at Great Lakes. Gee, but it's pretty there. I did my boots there. That yeah, country club. Now, Kirk Stampede. For crying out loud, will you cut out that whistling or else whistle something that don't give you the willies? Tension. Sorry, Captain, I didn't see you, sir. Okay, it's at ease, boys. The hills are home, huh? Did you miss them? Yes, sir. Sometimes. Where are you from, son? Wisconsin, sir. Hmm. That's nice country, Wisconsin. And nice rolling hills. You know, I've got a record of that song in my stateroom. That's my orderly for it sometime. Take it down in your quarters and play it. Thank you, sir. And don't let it get you down, boy. Every sailor's a land lover at heart sometime. <laughs> So that's the way it was some days, most days. Four on, eight off. Waiting. Waiting. Watching for something that was bound to happen sooner or later. Eyes tired from constant watching. And tempers sharp from the uncertainty of waiting. And that's the way it was that morning. Flowering through the glassy waters. Landfall off our port bow, sir. I guess those will be the Kangian Islands. Well, the Admiral should be changing course soon, unless... Unless those seagulls turn out to be Jap planes. Could be. Keep your eyes peeled for a flag hoist. That goes now, sir. Well, let's have it. Looks like... It is. In order to scatter. I had a hunch. Radio. Are you getting a message? Coming in now, sir. Well, let me have it if it comes. Patrol plane. Out of Surabaya. Reports. Planes approaching. The Houston has broken out a flag hoist, sir. What message? Houston reports unidentified aircraft sighted. Here, I'll take that. Bridge. All right, Sky Lookout reporting. Planes are scouted by, sir. I'll make out the signal now, sir. All ships to scatter immediately. We'll call our lands to battle stations. Yes, sir. Lieutenant Bracken reporting, yes, sir. Yes, yes. What is it, Lieutenant? Aircraft formations approaching a definitely enemy aircraft. Well, this is it. Sound general quarters. You see him, Jonesy? I can't even hear him. The Japs are flying high. Won't hear him till they come down with a stick of bombs. Look, I see him now, Jonesy. There. Yeah, twin engine bombers. Breaking into formations. One bunch heading straight for us. Keep your eye glued to that rangefinder, kid. Ought to be coming through any minute now. They're almost over us, Jonesy. What's the skipper waiting for, huh? What's he waiting for? <laughs> Bridge to engine room. Stand by for full power. Stand by for full power, sir. Right stand at rudder. 
Steady on two five zero. Right standard rudder, sir. Steady on two five zero. Two nine five. Two nine five, sir. One flight's coming in range now, sir. A check with the sky control. Aye, sir. Sky control. Sky control, aye. Get range of deflection. All guns stand by. Aye, aye, sir. Fire control. Fire control, right. Switch to local control. Aye, aye, sir. Left full rudder. Steady on zero seven five. Left full rudder. Steady on zero seven five, sir. Take it easy, kid. Steady. I gotta get one of those guys, Jonesy. Just one of them. Look. Houston's firing. Why don't they give us the range? Gun six. Gun six. Reporting, sir. Range 2,000. Deflection 0, 300. Range 2,000. Deflection 0, 300. Are we set, kid? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, kid. Let him have it. Will I let him have it? Will I let him have it? We can't do fast enough. I told you this wasn't no sandlot game. This is a series. Hey, look out. Get down. The idea. You'll find out. Listen. Four, one. You all right, kid? Yeah, I, I guess so. Hey, you ain't hit, kid. There's just vibration on your feet now. Look out. Coming again. Four, two. Missed again. And remember, kid, down off your feet when they're on top. You can't get them straight ahead. Four, three. Look at that one, Jonesy. Yeah, yeah. Must have got him. He's heading this way. Suicide dive. He's mine, Jonesy. He's mine. I'll get him. Yeah, game's over if you don't. Look at him come. Steady, kid. Steady. Okay, now. Motor starboard. Motor starboard. I think I got him. He's lost. There he goes. Yeah. Jonesy, I got him. I got him. In the drink. Yeah, sure did, kid. Home run with the bases loaded. This is only the first inning. <laughs> Lieutenant Bracken reporting, sir. Gunnery reports range finder knocked out and forward any aircraft battery. Well, tell them to share a range finder with the after battery, but keep them firing, if not by range finder, then by gas and by car. Take them to the level sir, or by Fort Bow. Well, get the range for the forward battery. Yes, sir. Look out. Get down. <laughs> You hurt, sir? No. John just, just knocked off my feet. Where did they get us? Can't tell from here, sir. Felt like the fourth foul. Well, find out. Well, they're exhaling it now. They're probably out of bombs. All right, Blake. Keep all guns manned. Aye, aye, sir. And have the rest of the crew turn to below to fight fire and clear up wreckage. And get the men with the worst injuries and burns to sick bay. If we've still got us, sick bay. You are listening to The Unsinkable Marblehead with Dean Jagger as Captain Robinson on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont. As our dramatization continues, the United States cruiser Marblehead is still reeling from a withering attack by Jap planes in the Java Sea on the navigating bridge. We've lost control, sir. We're circling. Messenger reporting, Mr. Drury, sir. Boy's compartment flooded as high as CPO quarters. How's our draft, did he say? Yes, sir. About double. Fires the bath the wardroom, but damage control parties are worse, sir. Good. Message from Chief Engineer, sir. Steering engine destroyed and rudder jammed full left. That's just what I thought. Steering engine room flooded, messenger? Yes, sir. But they're diving to get it clear. Oh, tell them to keep on it and keep me informed. Aye, aye, sir. Gargans reporting, sir. Gargans. Gargans, why aren't you in sick bay? Sick bay's demolished, sir. We're burning pretty badly below decks. I'm sorry it took me so long to get up here. How long before we can use the steering engine? No telling, sir. Any orders from us, sir? I'm... You lay below for first aid. Van Bergen will take over for you. I can still get around. We'll send for you if we need the guidance. The Van Bergen, take over for me here. I'm going below to inspect the damage myself. Now, keep circling. That's all we can do until they can get the rudder free. That's the first thing. We're a perfect target this way. <laughs> What's the, what's the trouble here, Johnny? The minute part of the magazine, sir. 
Keep working on the hatch, kid. I'll work on the fire. Pretty hot. Let's get some towels, Jonesy. Here, here. Here's my shirt. <coughs> Take it easy, below. We'll get you out. This hatch is buckled from the heat. Here, you. You help this lad with his hatch. Take your little life for that job. Good work, man. Thank you, sir. That's done. Black is pitched down there. I'm going down, kid. Stand by. Let me go down, Jonesy. I'm no good up here. Stand by like a target. That's the mate's right, son. The men down there are in bad shape. Stand by here to help them out. What is it, orderly? Reporting for engineering officer, sir. Magazines and storerooms are flooded. Fire rats under control with others are breaking out. What are the casualties? Fifteen killed or fatally wounded. About fifty seriously hurt you. Still haven't found them all out. Hey, Corman. How about uh, medical supplies, Carter? Pretty short, sir. Sick bay got a bad. We're trying to get some talcum powder for burns. Yes, there should be some aboard. Find it. Uh, no, no, no. Stand by, orderly. I may need you to carry a message to the bridge. All right. Uh, you there, kid. Kid from Wisconsin. Uh, yes, sir. Did you, uh, did you get all the men out of the magazine? Yes, sir. Just about in time. Last one must have got the ventilator. Jones, he's still inside. I see. Sure. Yes, yes. We'll get him out, round up a working party, and get the gunpowder, top side and overboard. Well, the hoist is jammed, sir. Well, then you'll have to carry it up. The compartment between here and the companionway is flooded, sir. Shall we open the watertight door and flood this one too, sir? Yes, yes. But now be careful. Watch for fire and short circuits. Remember, you're handling gunpowder. Yes, sir. I right, come on, Ordley. I'm going below to the steering room and see. Uh, yes, I may want to take a minute. I may want you to take a minute. <laughs> Hey, outside, I told you. This place is full of powder. I know. We've got to get a topside and overboard. Captain's orders. What? Does he know the hoist? Yeah, yeah, I told him. We'd open the watertight door to the next compartment there. Flood this one and use the number four companion way through the next compartment. Okay, if we don't drown doing it. Here, give me a hand with this here watertight door. All right. There. Okay, stand by for a ducking. <laughs> Pumps gone, Blake? Yes, sir. The repair crew was on the job, though. You know, Captain, we've taken on so much water and lost so much structural strength, I'm afraid she'll break at number one stack if we get any weather. Well, muster all available hands and form a bucket brigade until we can get the water down. All right. Well, now, pass them along now, men. What is it, messenger? Reporting for engineers, sir. He's evacuated a forward fire room. Did he say why? The men were being asphyxiated, sir. He can still give you 27 knots, though. As long as he can get oil that isn't full of salt water, that is, sir. Oh, very good. Report back to your station. Aye, sir. What's the news at, Parsons? They just got the rudder free, sir. Moran and Johnson diving and doing it just by feeling the pitch black. Well, what was the trouble? The motors are burned out, but the hydraulic rams are okay. They bled and freed the yoke. The rudder swings down, but we can't steer. Good, good, good. Nice work. Let's lock it amidship if possible. All right, we can get underway now. You two men give a hand to the working party that's getting the powder out of number four magazine. All right, sir. And tell them on the bridge I'm on my way up, Parsons. The marble head can still navigate. <laughs> How are we doing, Jonesy? Not too bad. Fine working party you rounded up. Working party of two, you and me. Hey, Jonesy, will you stop bumping into me? That's the third time. I didn't bump you. That was a... Then what was it? Yeah, just a... Yeah, skip it. Feel a lot better if you don't know. Oh, I get you. One of the... The fellas that didn't... Yeah. All right, come on. Let's hurry and get this stuff out of here. Hey, lights. Gee, blind you, don't I? Yeah. Must have got the current turned on. Well, that's good. Hey, kid, look out. And two wires are short. Kid! How are things below, Captain? Well, the Marblehead's still a man of war. We're afloat. We still have our firepower. We're still making 27 knots. I lay a course for Java through the Lombok Straits. We'll put in a chilacha. How are we still, sir? We'll steer by the engines. Just as long as they can keep them turning. Starboard engine ahead full. Stop port. Starboard engine ahead full. Stop port. Aye, sir. Back port. Then even them up. Back port. Then even them up. Port engine ahead. Stop starboard. Even them up. Port engine ahead. Stop starboard. Even them up. Aye, aye, sir. <laughs> How's the kid? Still under opiates. Third degree burns. Will it... Will it pull through? We'll do our best. That... that you, Jonesy? Hi, kid. 
Doctor was just telling me you're coming along swell. Hurt much? I messed things up good when I bumped into those two live wires tonight. It was Captain... Yeah, yeah, he understood. It happened to anybody. Lights coming on sudden and blind you the way they did. What I can't figure is how you got me out before you folded up. Oh, quit your kidding. I couldn't have. Yeah, sure. Honest. Yeah, that's the doctor here. Oh, hiya, Doc. Don't talk too much now. Try to get some rest. Oh, doctor, just a minute. Yes, Captain. Let him sleep now, Jones, if he can. Yes, sir. How are we doing, Jonesy? The ship, I mean. We're headed to the Java. We keep ahead of the water that's coming in, we'll be okay. That's good. It'd be swell to be on land again. Java's so nice and green. I'd kind of like to get there before. Skip it, skip it. You're going to be all right. Ain't he, Doc? Of course he is. Here's uh, the captain, you see, your son. Well, well, you're. You're looking pretty fit, my boy. Well done. Now, I wanted to bring you that phonograph record, but... Well, <laughs> isn't much left for my cabin. Well, maybe we can get a record in Java. That'd be great. Thanks, Captain. We'll have you fixed up in no time, Java. And someday, you'll be going back for a leave, maybe Wisconsin. How about it? How... How far do you suppose it is from... Java to Wisconsin, Captain. We're getting pretty good at this, Captain. We didn't get more than 40 degrees off the course that time. By the time we get in, we'll be doing fine. Oh, good morning, Doctor. I'm glad you came up. I wanted to ask if you plan to bury the dead at sea. Doctor... I'd rather not. You know, it's funny. I've been a sailor all my life, but when my turn comes, I hope to rest ashore. I'd like to bury my men ashore. What do you think? We'll be in Chilat out in ten hours. We put them all in the after turret. Well, then by all means, Doctor, we'll bury our dead ashore. Thank you, Doctor. <laughs> Almighty Father, here in alien but friendly soil, far from the homes that they've loved, we lay to rest our comrades. And yet in a larger sense, we know that to men who love freedom's way of life, all lands of freedom are home. We would remember all men who sleep in alien lands, comfort those who have given their sons that liberty may one day prevail through all the earth. Unto God's great mercy, we commit these departed in sure and certain hope for the resurrection unto eternal life. Amen. Ceylon, Fort Elizabeth, Simon Town, still wounded, but gamely plowing on, the marble head continued her long voyage home. The radio report just been picked up from Tokyo, Captain. Yes, well, let's see it. Well, listen to this, gentlemen. Radio Tokyo. In a ferocious engagement off Serbia, intrepid Japanese airmen today sank the mighty United States cruiser Marblehead. Lieutenant Seo and Mitsubishi were among those who died heroes' deaths in their sacrificial assault on the Marblehead, which was sunk, despite its heavy armor plate and savage resistance. They must have got us confused with two other ships. <laughs> Strikes me, the Marblehead's doing pretty well for ships at the bottom of the sea. And doing pretty well she was, 7,000 miles to her home port, but she made it. Then when American repair crews had taken over, I was told to report to the Secretary of the Navy in Washington. And it is therefore my privilege to confer upon you, Captain Robinson, the Navy's highest award for distinguished service in the line of your profession. Proceeding without regard for personal safety, you led your men in a successful engagement with the enemy, and in the face of extraordinary odds, 
brought your ship safely into its home port. And permit me as well to extend to you my personal congratulations, Captain Robinson. Thank you, sir. May I ask one question, Mr. Secretary? Why, yes, of course. Anything you like, Captain. Well, I'll be going back to the ship. And they're going to be asking me just one question. When will we be able to get back into action again? How soon our ship will be ready? Well, I wouldn't worry too much about that if I were you, Robinson. I have a hunch the department may be thinking about an admiral's shoulder board for you. In that case, you'd rate a more important command than the model head. Well, I... Well, that would be a great honor, of course, sir, but... You know, I like the marble head back if I can get it. Somehow, I, I feel safer aboard her than a bigger ship. Safer? Yes, and do you know why, sir? Because, well, so help me, I believe she really is unsinkable. Thank you, Dean Jagger. Mr. Jagger will return to the microphone later in the program. But before he does, we have a story of chemistry. Black powder, oldest of the major explosives made in the original DuPont plant on the historic Brandywine in 1802, is again serving in this war. Black powder starts depth charges on their lethal journeys. It ignites the propellant charge in all kinds of shells. It is in the fuse which detonates anti-aircraft and other shells at the proper moment. It is used in signal flares, saluting charges, primers, bursting charges, and many other ordnance items. For these purposes, it is superior to any other explosives. It is so important, indeed, that an Army Navy E was recently awarded to the Bielan Works of the DuPont Company, which makes black powder for the Army and Navy. Black powder, manufactured from sulfur, charcoal, and saltpeter, has been used for centuries as gunpowder and as a commercial explosive in mining, quarrying, construction, and blasting operations. It has extensive commercial uses and was the chief military explosive until the Spanish-American War when smokeless powder was introduced. Smokeless powder and TNT are the principal military explosives today. However, black powder has properties that are not duplicated by any other explosive. So, although it is not manufactured in large quantities compared to the others, it is valuable in this war as it was in wars of another day. Smokeless powder, the military propellant in common use today, is much harder to ignite than black powder. So, a percussion primer in a quick flash sets off a charge of black powder which in turn ignites the smokeless powder. Anti-aircraft, shrapnel, and other shells have time fuses which detonate them at the proper second. A trail of black powder in the intricate fuse serves that purpose, too. Today, the country's black powder mills are busy 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Old-fashioned black powder is again at war. Tomorrow, when peace comes, it will go back to its regular jobs of mining and quarrying as one of the DuPont better things for better living through chemistry. And here is Dean Jagger, star of this evening's cavalcade. It's been a real privilege to play the part of such a distinguished officer and gallant gentleman as Captain, uh, now Admiral Robinson. And if our reenactment of the Marble's Head heroic engagement has inspired you, our audience, to a greater realization of the need for fighting the war every minute of every day, then our efforts have been worthwhile. Next week, the Cavalcade of America will present a popular screen star, Maureen O'Sullivan, in Sky Nurse, the story of a new service in the American Army that is saving countless lives by flying men wounded in battle from front lines to base hospitals. Be with us again next week when Cavalcade presents Maureen O'Sullivan in Sky Nurse, an exciting, authentic drama of the war in North Africa. The orchestra and musical score tonight were under the direction of Donald Voorhees. This is Clayton Collier sending best wishes from Cavalcade sponsor, the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. Here's more news from the DuPont Wonder World of Chemistry. New DuPont Speed Easy Wall Finish covers wallpaper, brick, plaster in one coat. You thin Speed Easy with water. It goes on quickly, easily with brush or roller. Costs less than $3 a room. Comes in eight lovely modern colors. Remember... Speed Easy. S P W E D Speed E A S Y Easy. Speed Easy. Made by DuPont. This is the National Broadcasting Company. 